Yemen has been left devastated by more than five years of war. Now the country has to contend with COVID-19 as well. While officially there are less than 500 confirmed cases, the number of infected people is thought to be much higher. The UN says the healthcare system has already collapsed, with doctors being forced to turn away the sick as they simply cannot care for them. So is there any way to ease what's become a catastrophic crisis? Well, let's ask Dr. Rick Brennan, who is the World Health Organization's Regional Emergency Director for the Eastern Mediterranean Office. He joins me now from Cairo. Good to have you on the program, Dr. Brennan. Uh, first of all, give us Thanks an overview of the situation in Yemen. Are the numbers to be believed or should we be skeptical because it's difficult to get accurate numbers? Well, I think we have to look at Yemen within the context of, uh, of a background of enormous humanitarian need. Um, Yemen's a country of close to 30 million people. 80% of them need some form of humanitarian assistance with around two thirds of them uh, in very acute need. And as you rightly say, that's on the back of five years of ongoing conflict. Uh, but not only that, that's also on the back of decades of, uh, of underdevelopment. So it's the largest, most complex humanitarian crisis that probably any of us have ever dealt with uh, over the last you know, uh, five decades or so. And now uh, COVID, the, the COVID pandemic is adding a new level of complexity uh, to that huge level of need uh, and, and, and indeed suffering of the Yemeni people. Um, as you rightly say, uh, the, the numbers coming in right now, are, you know, official numbers are around 314 cases across the country. Um, we, we believe within the international community and certainly amongst WHO that that's a significant underestimate uh, of, of um, the health system is very, very indeed and um, isn't in a good position to be able to um, detect all cases and certainly not manage all cases. So we have uh, a, a very serious problem indeed, um, but uh, the UN uh, partners and our NGO partners are on the ground are doing all we can to, to ramp up the assistance right now. Right. So even in, in previous years, the World Food Program has had difficulty in getting food to people who are hungry. How does the WHO and others actually get to treating people who might be uh, infected by COVID-19? No, it's, uh, there are many operational constraints on the ground um, uh, because of the insecurity. You know, there's an ongoing conflict. There's uh, over 30 front lines. Um, only 50% uh, of health facilities are fully functional uh, across the, the, the new travel restrictions. It's even harder to get the supplies and equipment in. But um, so prior to the COVID outbreak, however, I think we were able to achieve some pretty remarkable uh, uh, targets um, over the years. Uh, last year, we vaccinated vaccinated over 10 million children against measles. Um, we, uh, we, we met international standards in terms of the delivery of uh, basic health care, uh, uh, curing of uh, severely acutely malnourished. So in spite of all the operational constraints, we were able to, to meet some right. major international targets and, and standards in health care. COVID uh, is making things more difficult. Right. Um, there are a uh, and uh, we are still in the situation where we have to expand the number of testing facilities, the number of isolation and, and treatment facilities. Um, we, we're not where we need to be. And we've got a major meeting with our donors on Wednesday this week and asking them to commit substantial amounts of money so we can take um, the response to scale. Right. And, and, and again, given the, given the history of uh, the relationship between the UN and the belligerents, right? So when we looked at the World, world Food Program at, at different times, whether it was the Saudi-led coalition or the Houthis, they tended to politicize the issue of aid. Sometimes they blocked aid and so on. When it comes to all of these, these players, are they, at least this time, with a global pandemic, making things easier, at least in the territory that they control, making it easier for the UN to do its work and, and help combat the coronavirus? Yeah. 
So any outbreak, you need strong political leadership to get on top of it. It's particularly important uh, in the setting of a pandemic. Um, and as you as you rightly say, we have uh, fragmented political leadership in the country right now. Uh, the Houthis in the north, the internationally recognised government out of uh, Aden, and now more recently uh, another breakaway group, uh, the Southern Transitional Council. So it's very difficult to get uh, the political alignment and the and the political leadership, which is absolutely vital to get on top of the outbreak, as you've seen in other countries across the world. Um, there is a level of politicisation in the country, so um, we we try WHO tries to move beyond the politicisation, be very frank and transparent about the needs. Um, it's a constant, uh, it's a constant nation. It's uh, a negotiation that can't be led by the health sector. Uh, we we uh, look to uh, the United Nations leadership uh, on, on these issues as well, as well as our partners working across other, other areas. Um, but it, it requires constant vigilance and constant engagement of, of the leadership across uh, all the different uh, groups at this point. Okay, Dr. Rick Brennan. Good to talk to you. Thanks so much for giving us that update on the situation in Yemen out of your office in Cairo. Um, some uh, food for thought there on the situation there against the backdrop of a devastating war that uh, is not ending anytime soon, unfortunately. Thanks so much for joining us.